Good morning, Grove. Good morning. We've been blessed this morning again to be in this place just one more time. Believe me, when I tell you from the time that you and I dressed ourselves, maybe had our cup of coffee or whatever it was that we may have done, got ourselves together, Makeup and oiled our hair, brushed our beard, I blessed us to drive ourselves here this morning. Count yourself among the blessed because somebody during that time has gone on to meet their maker. God is good. When I think about all of the tragedies and the death that has happened and is happening and that God is still smiling on on me and on us we have so much to be thankful for we have shoes on our feet clothes on our backs food on our table some of us may have just a little excess in the bank Well, okay, if you don't have an excess in the bank, at least you have a bank account. And you can't have it unless something is flowing through it. Because if you don't have it, you know, you know, if you don't have it, sometimes they'll close it down. And I want to challenge you this morning. Be thankful. Please excuse the building. We're still under construction. Still trying to do some much needed things. And this building now is running close to 70 years old. It doesn't seem like that. But we're trying to take care of it. And we're able to do that with your help and with your gifts and your giving. Let me beg of you to do something for me. Let's not forget those who have lost loved ones. Would you please, in your very personal and private prayer, whether you take five minutes, ten minutes, or however minutes needed, would you take time out to mention those who have lost loved ones, or even those that we stand and say, pray for sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, they lost this, they lost that. I want to I wanna challenge all of us to take prayer life serious. We've had some challenging death in this church. Not so much as from the COVID, but people's children who have been murdered. And they're really struggling. Let me say this too. Grief is real. And I'm learning that everybody don't grieve, you know, the same way. Shouldn't that person be over this by now? Don't, don't say that. Please, please don't, 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 don't say that because what may take you a month may take me two years. People in relationships are strange. Some people have a real Jonathan and David relationship. And there are mothers and fathers who have relationship with their children are just different than other people. And so that loss can be so, so devastating. And so, but in your very personal and private prayers, I'll do just this one this morning because I'm a little concerned about Jocelyn. Jocelyn is our sister, but Jocelyn is struggling. And she's struggling mighty bad. I um, don't want to talk about it a whole lot because I get very emotional, I, you know, Listen to me, church. I, I don't, I don't want to use that word. No matter what our children have done, they steal our children. No matter how horrendous, or how disrespectful, and all that has its place. But that doesn't change the love 
that mother or that father have for that child. Okay, I, I, the hurt is still, still hurting. And I'm really concerned about her, so I want you to take some time. We're probably going to be mentioning others, but I want you to take some time to just pray for her, that she'll not lose faith, give up, because it's so easy to do in a world that is so mean and cruel right now. We don't know right from wrong and wrong from right. Democrats don't know this. Republicans don't know that. We're just in a mess. In their minds, I but God has got it all worked out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep my hands in his hands. I'm going to keep my life in the hand because he has weathered the storms. And I'm going to ride the storms with him. I'll be mentioning our vaccinations, uh, the church here, our, our 8 o'clock hour, uh, all really about 98% is done. And so we want to just kind of keep a track of where we are so we can make some decisions about our worship service here uh, at, at West Oak Grove. Uh, Sister Thelma Cragen is in the hospital this morning. We're hoping that she'll get out sometime uh, today or tomorrow, but she's better, but uh, uh, she's been... Uh, I know she don't want to be in her own mother day. I can almost see her now. But, but certainly uh, we're praying that she will continue to get stronger. She'll be back at home with her, her children. Let me also say happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. All right. All right. I, I know this is the Lord's Day. Amen. I know this is the Lord's Day, but this is also one of the days that we celebrate the mothers. Uh, and what, a, what an awesome responsibility mothers have in, in days like these. And so we are just thankful for your presence. We thank you for your being here. And let's just have a great time in, in the Lord. As we, as we are do, uh, having this great time in the Lord, let me remind you, people are really struggling with coming back to this building. They really like this virtual, okay? Uh, but we're going to be praying for you, amen, uh, that you get yourself on out here, amen. Uh, but they, they, they're struggling. And then this morning, the devil said, all this rain, and the clouds are overcast. Some of y'all all not, almost didn't make it, amen, but you, you <laughs> made, made your way out here. And so we are thankful and we're so, we're so, so grateful. And so see, we're going to come bless our hearts with the word, and we'll come back, amen, with uh, some other things. God bless you. Good morning, bro. so good to us in the midst of this pandemic in the midst of all the things that have happened in the last year or so uh, it would be remiss of us not to say thank you for how good that he's how good that he's been the things that he's done all the glory belongs to you all the glory belongs to you oh god Oh God, all the glory belongs, all the glory belongs to you. Yes, all the glory belongs to you. Oh God, oh God, yes. I want to thank you, all the glory. Oh, to you, all the glory. Yes, all the glory belongs to you. Oh God, yes. All the glory belongs to you. Oh God, oh God, yes. If you believe it, say all the glory.
Go. Cool. 
chapter 5 verse 1 and it says thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Lord was finished and Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had dedicated and the silver and the gold and all of the instruments put him put he among the treasures of the house of God I just read chapter 2nd Chronicles chapter 5 verse 1 and I stand for prayer Lord I want to say thank you, Lord, I want to say thank you, yeah, yeah, Lord, I want to say right now because we are weak and you are so strong we bow our heads in humble submission to your will to your majesty and to your awesomeness for you are certainly worthy of all of our praise and thanksgiving for you have been good throughout the ceaseless ages you were there for our ancestors you are there for our mothers and our fathers. And you're here today for us. We stop just to say thank you. We thank you for health and strength. A place to work. A place to lay our heads. We thank you for the food that is on our table. We just thank you for being God all by yourself. You have kept us from seen and unseen dangers. You've been our dwelling place. We thank you for not only watching over us individually, but thank you for watching over our children and our grandchildren. We know that the virus has plagued so many, but God, we thank you for the one that it didn't touch. We come this morning Recognizing that if it were not for you, we could do nothing. We come knowing that we are just empty pictures ready to be filled. 
The houses we live in, we know they're yours. The cars that you provide for us, we know they're yours. We thank you for all of the many things that you have given to us to be stewards. We just thank you. We thank you for the sunshine, the rain, the air that you're allowed to move upon our body. But most of all, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. And we thank you for allowing your son to die in our place. In the precious, sweet and holy, matchless name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. telling God thank you. I said there's nothing wrong with telling the Lord thank you. He's done. He's done. He's done. Oh Lord. He's done so much. Amen. Some of you all know what it's like to be blessed in here. Some of you all really know what it's like to be without but then be blessed at the same time. He's been good to us. Amen. He has been better to us than we could ever dare be to ourselves. As bad as we are, we ought to be dead. But God said, not right now. Thank God for holding back the death angel. And we're here just to tell him, ain't nothing like this kind of worship right here. Amen. Virtual is all right, but you can't get this in virtual. Y'all can say what you want to. I don't believe you can get this in virtual. Amen. I, I, there's something magnetic. There is something empowering when we come together. And we can do this in in person, amen. I'm happy today to see Brother Adam Ware with us. Amen. Amen. Adam, Adam called me earlier this week, and we've just had a great time fellowshipping and just talking and watching and listening to him. Amen. Talk about church folk. Amen. He sees things a lot different now. Amen. Church folk are the most strangest folk you ever walk around in your life. But you got to love them anyway, amen. amen. Preach to them anyway, amen. Now, they ain't all bad. No, 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 no. All of them ain't bad. But there's a few. There's a few. That will give you some challenges. But those, one, those are the ones that God give you to grow you up. Amen. amen. To train you and just bless your life. And you know, you know as Adam keeps growing in the ministry, he's going to thank God for his devils. Amen. amen. He's going he to thank God for those that challenge his ministry because those are the ones that really show him how to preach. Amen. You, if you if you want to hear a preacher preach, show sure up. He done been through something. Amen. If you've been through something, you, you'll learn. You'll learn quick how to preach. We're just honored to have him uh, uh, to say he's one of our own. He's a long ways from home, red God. Hartford, Connecticut. He was so glad to be here in all this warm weather. I was glad to see him in this warm weather. Looking at it made me cold. Amen. I mean, I mean it's cold where he. It's cold up there. I'm telling you, and I, and, I, and I just thank God that he's hanging in there. I don't think he did what, a year already? Year and four months. We know how to count them, a year and four months. Amen. If I had to hear Paul, say four days too. Amen. But certainly we are just thankful. We're honored. I know that Paula and George and the family is proud of him. He has certainly grown in the ministry. And I know this is Mother Day, but I'm not one of those kind of preachers, you know, who who jealous of the pulpit. I, I want to I wanna hear him. And I want to not only hear him, but I want to hear him bless my life. I want, him, I want God to use him this morning. To touch me in such a way that I can leave here better, amen, than I came. And what a great joy to have him with us. See him or somebody who will come back and bless us with something. Amen. And then the next voice you hear be that of George Adam Will. Amen. Blessing us all the way from Hartford. Amen. Come on, see. Can we stand together as he comes? Growing up as a child, oh Lord, in my mother's care. Truly 
enough to shout right there. I bring you glad tidings from the coldest capital in America, the home of Frosty the Snowman, the land of Winterfell. You Game of Thrones fans will catch that tomorrow. Hartford, Connecticut. And I am privileged to serve the Northside Church of Christ. 
when we argue, we cuss sometimes. We fight sometimes. But we still family. And I love them and they love me. Even when they don't sound like they love me, they love me. And I'm thankful, if they're watching, I'm thankful for them. Uh, and I'm thankful that God placed me there to grow me. Amen. Sometimes we can place ourselves, but God placed me there uh, to grow me. And I'm thankful that he is working in me and working in them uh, to help both of us grow together. Uh, today is a special day. And it, your mother should be special to you every day. Y'all too sanctified this morning. Your mother should be special to you every day. And I love my mother. And she came to Connecticut when the only thing that could move was tears. right there. Thank you. And I just want her to know that I love her. Her to the point to where I won't let none of y'all in here talk about it. <laughs> you might talk about somebody else, Mom. <laughs> but if you talk about Paula Yvette Webb, <laughs> ain't no scriptures gonna save you when I get you. <laughs> eyes act a fool about my mama. Amen. Amen. And I hope that you act a fool about your mama too. Amen. But I want to tell all of the mothers here, young and old, and to all of the mothers that are worshiping with us on Facebook this morning and maybe other platforms, happy Mother's Day to you. Uh, we're, we're thankful. You could have worshiped anywhere in the world this morning, but you decided to worship here with us at the West Oak Grove Church of Christ, and we want to say thank you so much. A mother has a very hard job. It is not an easy job. And a lot of times, uh, children can be not very appreciative of their mothers. Um, but I, I just wanted to tell you that if you have a mother that loves you, you need to be thankful for your mother. You need to show her all the honor and glory every chance that you get. Because you only get one mother. And some of your mothers may not have much. They may not have you know, a lot of love to give. But whatever they give you, be appreciative that they gave it to you. Now, I am not a long-winded speaker. Oh, let's see. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's not my MO to be long-winded. Uh, but I do believe that God has a word for us this morning. Uh, if in this word is for anybody, uh, that maybe, maybe you feel like giving up. 
maybe you are a graduate in school, and you're close to graduating, but you're tired. You're tired of writing papers. You're tired of writing essays, and you want to give up. Maybe you have an illness, and it appears better for you just to give up and die. This word is for you this morning. Maybe you are a mother and children just getting on your nerve and everything that you give them, they don't appreciate it. This word is for you on this morning. This morning I have what they call some of these trips that people take all inclusive. Uh, a word for every situation uh, and for every person. If you give me about 25 to 30 minutes, I promise you I will not, I will not be long. <clears throat> but please help me, help me preach. Stand with me for the reading of the word of God. I want to thank all of our brothers that have participated in worship this morning uh, from the front to the back ushers all the way up to the pool bed. Zantarian, thank you for reading the scripture. You was a little taller than me when I started. But, <laughs> but I appreciate you for doing such a wonderful job. Seabrin always an inspiration. He's still in the church. He's still singing. Taking care of his family. And a great man of God. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And DJ is still in the church. Taking care of his family. Great man of God. Brother Wallace is still in the church. Still taking care of his family. Great man of God. look around I see a lot of brothers still in the church yeah. still taking care of your family yeah. great men of God yeah. and I just want to tell you that I am thankful uh, for all of you and to my church mother I don't see her today but she would tear your tail up Mary Newsom. I don't see her today, but let if you see Sister Mary, tell her Brother Webb asked about it. Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse number 1. I have one verse for you today. And your young adults, they cheated and heard this lesson. Uh, but so many are graduating college and high school. I felt this was definitely a message for everyone uh, that was on a verge of just giving up. Second Chronicles chapter five, verse number one. So all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and all the furnishings. And he put them in the treasuries of the house of God. Just for a few moments this morning, hard work pays off. All right. Hard work pays off. You may be seated in the presence of God. Y'all gonna help me preach a little bit this morning. Thank you. There is an adage that coaches love to rave. Hard work beats talent when talent does not work hard. Oak Grove talent is beautiful. Our God created talent. He inserted abilities in all his children. 
We all have talents because God gave them to us. God does not give us anything just for our own benefit. He gave us talents to bless the world and to be a lighthouse for his kingdom. Legendary coach John Wooden said, there is no substitute for hard work. If you're looking for the easy way, if you're looking for the trick, you might get by for a while, but you will not be developing the talents that lie within you. There is simply no substitute for hard work. James, the bond servant, said, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Listen to the words of our great apostle Paul, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word is poema. The idea is that we are God's beautiful poem. We are God's work of art. Uh -huh. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. I should tell somebody, you are God's beautiful poem. O oh, Grove, we are God's work of art. And I know it to be true because God is the supreme artist. He is the creator of Pablo Picasso and Van Gogh. God gave Basquiat's and Warhol's their artistic eye. He put the colorful imagination in the cognizance of Walt Disney. That is God's artistry. When fall season sets its home in Hernando and the leaves began to transform into orange, yellow, and purple, that is God's artistry. When the full moon rests against the dark canvas of the night and brightens up the city, that is God's artistry. When you see a black bear in the woods, with all its strength, grit, and power. That is God's artistry. When you think about the waters of Niagara Falls and how the water sounds like a rushing mighty wind, that is God's artistry. When you think about the human body with over 200 bones and 25 feet of intestines and eyes that see like smartphones, that is God's artistry. In our text today, we meet a grand product of God's artistry in a man named Solomon. Solomon is one of the more familiar kings of ancient Israel. He was the second son of David and Bathsheba, and he expanded Israel's borders and economy more than any king in Israel's history. The origin Solomon can be found in 1 Kings chapter 1, 11 through 30. Solomon's name is derived from the Hebrew word peace. In fact, peace is one of the things Solomon is remembered for in the Bible. There were no major wars for the majority of his reign. And the biblical authors look back on this time as a period of abundance. 1 Kings chapter 4, verse number 25 says, So Judah and Israel lived in safety of everyone under their own vine and fig tree from Dan to Bathsheba. Watch this. All the days of Solomon. Israel knew great prosperity during the supremacy of Solomon. Israel was safe from external and internal enemies. Solomon must have been an amazing king for God to have blessed his reign with such wealth and peace. However, there is more that meets the eye when it comes to the glorious reign of Solomon. 
The story of Solomon begins with David on his deathbed, giving Solomon a final charge to remain faithful to the covenant between God and Israel. We are soon told that Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the footsteps of his father David. King Solomon has a dream in which God offers him anything that he wants. Instead of asking for money, y'all know we'll ask for some money. Instead of asking for women, instead of asking for a big house, Instead of asking for a Benz, instead of asking for a seven-figure salary or power, he asks God for wisdom so that he can rule people of Israel with integrity. Family, often we are in a rush to the finish line. Many people lack resilience and perseverance to see things to completion. Along the way, they discover the tremendous cost of achieving any worthy objective. Achievement requires intentional razor sharp focus with the commitment to do whatever is necessary to finish the goal. We must be willing to sweat, willing to sacrifice, willing to be fatigued, willing to go the extra mile to finish the goal. You must be willing to stay up all night, burn the midnight oil, work another job to finish the goal. Iron Mike Tyson said, unfortunately, sometimes you can't have fun accomplishing your goals. Sometimes people don't have the determination, the will, the steadfastness, or tenacity. They give in under the slightest struggle. Michael Jordan said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've almost lost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and repeatedly in my life. And that is why I succeed. Oh, Grove. People have the tendency to desire the outcome, but want to skip the process. But the truth is that we must go through it in order to get to it. At the height of his prowess on the links, Tiger Woods was the greatest because he worked the hardest. Kobe, the black mamba, is revered and respected by his mamba mentality, which described the intensity of his work ethic. Former Mississippi Valley State standout Jerry Rice is the greatest wide receiver to ever lace up a pair of cleats because no one worked harder than Jerry off the field. People don't become Olympic champions or the greatest in their careers solely on talent alone. It was Conor McGregor that said, nothing can beat hard work. Church, we must travel through the valley on our way to the mountaintop. We must travel through Egypt before we get to Canaan. We must endure some hell in our lives before we can enjoy some peace. Rapper Meek Mill said that is levels to this. Things will get harder in our lives before the level up. On your way to success and achievement, you will be tested. You will get tired. You will get discouraged. You will feel like quitting. You will be tempted. You will be criticized. You will be lied on. You will be misunderstood. You will make sacrifices. You will pay a price. But that's just the way it is, Old Grove. You must pay the cost to be the boss. There is no crown without a cross, no victory without a valley, no win without weariness, no success without suffering, no triumph without tribulations, no healing without hurting, no anointing without adversity, no medal without misery, no trophy without troubles, no blessing without burdens, no favor without faithfulness, no salvation without service, no output without input. I just want to let somebody know today 
That hard work pays off. Don't be deceived. King Solomon had to put in some hard work to complete this building project. I have talked to pastors who have gone through building projects and consistently they all declare it is the most difficult thing they have ever had to do in their ministry. Projects like this always take you longer than you plan and cost you more than you wanted to spend. It's hard work because you have so many contractors and workers. You must deal with city officials and inspectors. You must deal with making sure the building is up to code. You must deal with staying within your budget. You must deal with the fact that you can't finish it all at once. Solomon built many buildings in his day. He isn't new to this, but true to this. Solomon is best known as the one who sponsored and oversaw the construction of the temple in Jerusalem. 1 Kings chapter 6 through chapter 8 detail the blueprints of this sacred tabernacle built in the time of Moses. It was an elaborate and ornate structure. From its first erection in the wilderness until the time of Solomon, over four centuries, the tabernacle containing the Ark of the Covenant and its sacred treasures was but a movable tent pitched where peace or convenience would permit. When David selected Jerusalem to be his royal city and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies, he said to the prophet Nathan, Lo, I dwell in a house of cedars, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord remains under curtains. In ancient Israel, wood was especially valued. This meant that King Solomon's father, David, lived in an expensive, beautiful home. When he remembered the ark of God dwells inside tent curtains, it bothered David. David was troubled by the thought that he lived in a nicer house than the ark of the covenant. Oh, Grove, it should bother you that your house is much cleaner than the Lord's house. It should bother you that you spend more money on repairs at your house than the Lord's house. It should bother you when you go into the bathrooms and the garbage can is overflowing and nobody want to throw it in the garbage can. It should bother you when you come into this church building and you walk past paper on the floor and nobody picks it up. Why? Because this is the Lord's house. In the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verse number 3, then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat but do not have enough. You drink but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with hope. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple. That I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. The temple that Solomon built for the Lord was over the top. The tabernacle in Moses' day was 10 cubits squared, but Solomon's was double the size. 1 Kings 6 gives you the construction of the temple. Its length was 60 cubits. Width was 20 cubits wide. Height was 30 cubits. The entire temple was overlaid with gold until he had finished all the temple. The lowest chamber was 5 cubits wide. The middle was six cubits wide, and the third was seven cubits wide. First Kings chapter six, verse number seven tells us this construction was silent. The temple's construction used finished stones cut at the quarry so that no hammer, chisel, or any iron tool was heard in the temple while it was being built. 
Oh, Grove, this just speaks to the way God works in his people. Often the greatest work in the kingdom of God happens quietly. I wish I had some shouters. Just because you don't hear the work, see the work, or agree with the work, does not mean that work is not being done in the church. The hardest workers in the church don't need their name called from the pulpit. Because you do, you know, we got people in the church that only work for the preacher to call their name, right? Amen, somebody. The hardest workers don't need to tell you about their accomplishments. The hardest workers don't need to tell you anything. Solomon didn't make no noise to finish the temple. The work spoke for itself. It is important to understand that whenever you endeavor to accomplish anything of significance, there will be unplanned, unwanted, and unexpected problems to arise. Some people fail or come short of attaining their goals because they did not manage their expectations. They expected everything to go smoothly without a hitch. They got married thinking the honeymoon would last forever. They have a child never expecting their child to become a hell raiser. They take the new job never expecting to deal with office politics, gossip, and backbiting. They become members of the church never expecting people to act like saved sinners. The sad truth is some people are just flat out lazy and want everything to be handed to them on a silver plate. You must put in some work. You must be a whole hustler. You must get on and stay on your grind. Comedian Steve Harvey came under great criticism when he said rich people don't sleep. Pop cultures Motivational speaker Eric Thomas says lions like to hunt. They love the process just as much as they like the process. And Oak Grove, I've come to discover some of us just want to score touchdowns. We don't want to put in the work that it takes to be great. You're not in love with the process. A real man and a real woman in the dark is always working when nobody else is watching. It's like this, be phenomenal or be forgotten. Hard work pays off. And I don't know who you are today, but today needs to be the day you declare my hard work is going to pay off. All the labor, all the work, all the effort, all the exertion, all the grind, all the hustle, all the toil, all the industry, all the struggle, all the extra credit, all the tour days, all the meal prep, all the working out, all the tutoring, all the sacrifice, all the overtime, all the late nights, all the studying, all the praying, all the worship, all the praise, all the serving, all the ministry. Somebody needs to know that it's going to pay off. There is a reward coming, a crown coming, a harvest coming, a prize coming, a gift coming, a blessing coming. Hard work pays off. There is a better day coming, a day of renewal, day of hope, day of transformation, day of new life, day of victory, day of shouting, day of joy, day of peace, day of graduation. Why? Because hard work pays off. In all my days of walking without God, somebody needs to declare today that it is finished. All my days of turning away from God are finished. While we are at it, tell somebody here today that it is finished. You're finished trying to satisfy the masses, and now you're trying to satisfy the master. You're finished rolling over and playing dead. You're finished living beneath your privileges. You're finished borrowing and never repaying. You're finished compromising your convictions. You're finished entertaining 
foolish questions. You're finished bending backwards for unappreciative people. You're finished settling for leftovers. You're finished with empty worship. You're finished with half-hearted commitment. You're finished paying for crimes you did not commit. Your hard work is going to pay off. Tell somebody it's finished today. Tell somebody that it's finished. When Jesus said it is finished, he was saying the law of Moses is finished. Circumcision is finished. The devil is finished. Death is finished. The Sabbath is finished. The blood of animals is finished. The Levitical priesthood is finished. The old covenant is finished. Temple worship is finished. And I'm just happy to know this morning that whatever our God decides to start, our God always finishes. God started something in you, and God is going to finish it. Being confident of this very thing, that we have begun a good work in you, we'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Take joy in the fact that God isn't finished with you yet. You might be down, but God isn't finished. You might be sick, but God isn't finished. You might be broke, but God isn't finished. You might be heartbroken, but God isn't finished. You might be suffering, but God isn't finished. You might be struggling, but God isn't finished. You might be weak, but God isn't finished. You might fall down, but God isn't finished. You might be tried with fire, but God isn't finished. You might be in captivity, but God isn't finished. You might be sick, but God isn't finished. You might be living in a shelter, but God isn't finished. You might be in divorce court, but God isn't finished. You might be in bankruptcy, but God isn't finished. You might be in counseling, but God isn't finished. You might be in the unemployment line, but God isn't finished. You might be a tired parent, but God isn't finished. You might be a struggling student, but God isn't finished. You might have a criminal record, but God isn't finished. You might not know where your next meal is coming from, but God isn't finished. I already told you, God starts what he finishes. God is not going to give up on anybody in this room today. I don't care how bad your life looks. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what people say about you. I don't care how you feel about yourself when you look in the mirror. The God that we serve, oh, I wish I had a church today. The God that we serve. The God that we serve in this church, in this world, is not finished with any of us. I don't care how bad it looks. He ain't finished yet. God is just working it out. Your prayer is not denied. It's just delayed. And God is working out everything that you asked him for. He ain't finished yet. I know that he ain't finished yet. Because if that be the case, I wouldn't be here today. I'm a walking testimony that God isn't finished. And some of you too are walking testimonies that God isn't finished. I don't care what the situation is. I know for a fact that hard work pays off. And don't let nobody derail you from your goals. You got to be careful when you think of a great idea and you dream something and you tell somebody. The devil will use that person to tell you that it ain't possible. Stop telling all your business. You don't owe nobody no explanation. If God led you to dream it, if God put it on your heart and your mind, he ain't finished. I'm tired of y'all telling folk all your business. you limiting your own dreams. If God gave it to you, have enough sense to communicate with him about it. Hard work pays off. And I don't know what you're going through. I don't. And I don't know who this message was for today, but I hope that you leave this place better than you came. For every mother that's going through hell with children. For every student that's going through hell at school. 
For every person that feels like giving up every day, you wake up and look in the mirror, you don't like what you see, let me tell you something. Hard work pays off. If you're here today and you have given up, it's okay. We've all been there. If you've given up, if you have not given God a chance, because the devil is very crafty, he's strategic in making you believe there's no hope for your situation. If you're here and you have given up, let me tell you something. Do not give up. You're not the only person that's struggling. You're not the only person that is going through something. And let me tell you something that I know for a fact was even hard pill for me to swallow. There's always somebody that got it worse than you. And if you're here and you're not a member of the body of Christ, if you're watching with us on Facebook and you're not a member of the body of Christ, let me tell you something. There is no better person to have on your side than the almighty God. He can bring you through things that a therapist can't. He can touch your body in ways that a doctor cannot. He can do things. He can help you in ways that words cannot describe. Listen, we want you to become a member of the body of Christ. How do you become a member? Listen, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you believe that gospel? Knowing the terror of God, we persuade men to go. This world is too hard for you to try to make it by yourself. And you cannot do it. People in the church, it's hard for them to make it. I'm telling you, stop playing so much. Get serious about your life. Because life is precious. You have it today, and it's gone tomorrow. Some of my cousins, some of my friends are no longer here. Life. I did a funeral two weeks ago for a three-year-old. One of the hardest things I ever had to do in my life. Lord, we know what to say when you're 95 and you die, the Lord of the house. That's easy. We know what to say if you ain't in the Lord and you was a good person. That, that, that's easy. But what do you say to a mother and a father whose son was killed in a drive-by? Ain't bothering nobody. Could have been any of your three-year-old nieces, nephews, and children. He was just playing with his toys. And somebody was ignorant enough, got beef for somebody else and killed the son. Three years old. Life is precious. Stop playing and get serious about your life. See you.
And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Come on, say, Adam, Adam. you blessed us. Amen. Amen. Can you say, can you say hard work? Hard work. Pays off. Pays Come on, God is not, not. finished with me yet. Amen. 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 Hard work. You, you lead that sermon here with me. What a great job. Good to have you home. Thank God. Hey, thank God. Amen. Anybody, anybody here in it growing up? Here's some growth. Amen. Amen. And that's what ministry is all about. That's what life is all about in the ministry. But you know, I, I appreciate uh, uh, Adam in terms of, 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 of being a preacher. Why? Because God had only one son. He could have been anything he wanted to be, but he chose to be a preacher. Amen. And preaching is a calling. And Adam, you did an outstanding job. Whenever, whenever you're home, amen. I know the other churches would love to have you on Sunday morning. Yes, sir. We certainly are honored that you stopped by here. Amen. 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 To say something to your West Oak Grove family there. Let's prepare our hearts and our minds now for our giving. Being willing to give back to the greatest giver that humanity has ever heard of. For God so loved the world that he gave not only his son, but his own. He gave us the very best that heaven has to offer. Listen to what Paul told the church in Corinth, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It says, remember this, the person who plants a little will have a small heart. But the person who plants a lot will have a big harvest. Each of you should give as you have decided in your heart to give. You should not be sad when you give. And you should not give because you feel forced to give. God loves the person who gives happily. I like this. And God can give you more blessings than you need. Then you will always have plenty of everything. Enough to give to every good work. Let's remember, nothing belongs to us. It all belongs to the Lord. And he loved us so much to make us stewards of what belongs to him. He says, give and it shall be given. How? Good measures. Press down. Shaking together. This is God giving back to you what belongs to him. And he always give us increase. You plant one little old seed of corn, you get a whole stalk with plenty of ears. God is a giver. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for health and strength, for allowing us to work the long hours to provide for our families. Help us to remember right now, this very moment in our life, that we are living because of you, and we have what we have because of you. Let us remember that it is because of you that we live and we move and have our very existence. Thank you for the gift of giving and the gift and the gift of grace giving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
decided to become poor that we might become rich. It was at that hill that the blood cleansed us from all of our sins. At that hill, the old cross or the old covenant was nailed to the cross. And then he cried, it is finished. The agenda that was set, everything on the agenda was completed. But yet, it wasn't finished. He had one other thing that he had to defeat, and that was the grave. And when he went there, Texts tell us he wrestled with hell, death, and the grave. And all death is for us now is a shadow. Thank God for Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for loving us more than we could ever love ourselves. While we were sinners, he died for us. So when you partake of the, the bread and the juice, let's not allow it to be just cracker and juice. Amen. But somebody died for us to be able to partake. Because that bread represents the day that they broke his body in that they beat but he stayed right there. They pierced him. Flowed blood and water. Thank you, Lord. Because with that, I am forgiven. I'm cleansed of my sin. Shall we pray? Our God and our Father, we thank you for the bread that represents your broken body. And the fruit of the vine that represents your shed blood. We pray, God, that we will take with clean hands and pure hearts until we shall meet again. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. We may sup together. I know it was the blood, Lord, I know it was the Yes, and I know it was the blood that saved me, me, 
to see all of you that are present here today. Just a few things here. To our virtual church members, what a joy to know that you were in our presence this morning uh, as we worship God together. I know you're probably looking for me to speak this morning on Mother's Day, but we were honored to be in the presence and to sit at the feet of Brother Adam Webb this morning. So we're grateful uh, for him on today. Again, to Westville Grove family, please excuse the building. We are still under construction and work and things of that nature, we are certainly grateful uh, for the guys that are really working in the building each day, trying to get things in good, good shape here. The building is getting some age on it, and we want to keep it up, amen, and keep it looking uh, as if it is new. Again, let's not forget those who have lost loved ones, and certainly keep Jocelyn and many others, but Jocelyn in particular, in prayer as she continues to struggle and to deal with the death of her son. Also, I need to ask you this while I got you here. If you had all your vaccination shots, would you raise your hand for me? If you had all your vaccination shots, everybody has had all the vaccination shots, all right? How about if you just had one, had one, going back to get your second one? Okay, one. Okay, who has not taken it or not planning on taking it? Not planning on taking it, not planning on taking it. All right, all right. All right, we are where we, we really are where we need to be. Uh, I look like... Uh, this is not all of my 11 o'clock worship members, amen. But at the 9 o'clock, I think everybody had been vaccinated uh, and only two was not going to be. And so uh, that, that's a pretty good percentage in my 8 o'clock hour. So we will respond on next Sunday uh, in regards to what we're going to do from this point on in terms of continue at 9 o'clock or we're going to go back to a, a 10 o'clock worship as we were doing, uh, getting ourselves acclimated back into Sunday school, our kids back in the classrooms. But it's going to be a moment for that because we're, we're working to get the building uh, uh, in good ventilation, virus proof, and all those kind of things. So work with us, continue to pray for us, and continue to continue to give as you have been doing. Things are really coming along, coming along well. We want to celebrate this morning with Mariah Wallace, who graduated Saturday from the University of Memphis. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
she's not here this morning. Um, oh, no, she is here. I'm talking about someone else right now. I'm sorry I didn't conclude that, that, that sentence, but we're certainly proud of Mariah and her hard work. Also, yesterday, we um, celebrated with uh, Terry Jr., DJ's wife, Sherelle, over in uh, Jonesboro, Arkansas. She graduated from Arkansas State University. She's not with us. Uh, we're appreciative of, of that. We thank God for, for that. Um, also, Alexis Hand uh, graduated uh, cum laude from uh, Jackson State University. And they're still in that area. Continue. And then our sister Stephanie Hill uh, is with us today. She graduated from Southwest Amen Community College. Uh, Fiance, uh, she graduated from law school on yesterday. Th th there may be some who don't know who you are. Would you just stand for just a moment? That is Adam's fiance. Oh, I like the way you got up. Amen. Amen. You, I tell you, that's all right. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And congratulations, amen. Also, uh, Stephanie, we are proud of you with everything that you're doing. We're certainly proud of your commitment. And, and I figured that's, I, I'll talk to you about that a little later, but, but thank God for you. Also, her son, uh, Mark Canvas. Mark Canvas had a real bad uh, knee accident that really uh, stopped him from going into the pros. He was a, a good star player there at Ole Miss, but that leg, that knee, that surgery has, has proven to be very good. And so he was, uh, went over into uh, the, uh, out of the country, playing out of the country. And that team is a semifinal team for the championship over in Europe. And uh, he is one of the, uh, uh, I think the, um, the text that I got, you know, he's at, he's at the free throw line making it happen. Amen. And so let's be praying that his knee continue to get stronger and that he has success over there so that his success there We'll bring him back into the NBA here, and we can all get us some free season tickets. <laughs> or just at, least, at least get a fanfare over there, you know, and, and they'll know it's the Grove, amen. It's rooting for him. Uh, and I'm praying that for him because if you've ever been around Mark Canvas, he's just a wonderful, wonderful, spirited person. And so, and so certainly we want, we want the best for him. Also, Sister Craig and Sister Thelma Craig and one of our Probably our oldest member here. She is doing okay. She's in the hospital, but we're expecting her to be released uh, soon. Again, I mentioned I mentioned very shortly. Um, we have a lot of debt in this church. We've had a lot of debt all over the area here, and as soon as we can get just a little Normans, we're going to have a grief conference here at the Grove. We had, our, we had our first one here a few years ago when my Aunt Janice lost her daughter to a, a violent murder. And we, it was just full in here. I couldn't believe the people uh, that was here and those that was really hurting. And the gentleman that we had from Christian Counseling out in Bartlett, uh, he was absolutely great. And so we're going to ask him to come back. Uh, but the, there are those who now have lost someone and it's very fresh. Sister Erica Creighton lost her son to, uh, I was there the night that the police told her that her, uh, that was her son, and it was devastating. And my, my Aunt Janice to uh, come home and find her daughter, you know, murdered, it was, it was devastating. Uh, and, and, and the thing about it, that this grief thing, sometimes it takes a while to get over. And, and, and Jocelyn, uh, if you all have paid attention, Jocelyn has not been herself. You know, you can be here, but you can't be here. You can be here, but you're not here. And you can also see it in her physique. Her physically is still weighing on her. I want to beg of, of you to, 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 to uh, make it your intentional purpose to pray.
pray for, jo for Jocelyn and Jocelyn alone, for her strength and for her mind. Her mind. I'll say it again. No matter what our children do, my children, your children, they're still ours. And that love never changes. Jeffrey Dahmer, who, who actually, I mean, he was, a, he was gruesome, but his father said on national TV, on all that that boy had done, he's a good boy. We wouldn't say that because that's not our child. Somewhere along the way, he got off. But that's still that man's. And I'm saying, let's pray for everybody's children. And when we ask you to pray for, for Jocelyn, we're saying she's struggling. Uh, Jocelyn never, never not answered my call. Never. But she finally responded in a text. Thank you for getting that done for me. She's struggling. A lot of them are struggling. So be in prayer that we can get everything somewhere back to normalcy so we can really get to some programs that are desperately needed. Secondly, to our benevolent ministry, you have not wavered. Would y'all celebrate that with me? There are a lot of things that they do that they just do it out of their pockets. I'll tell Stephanie, just send us the invoice. She don't, I ain't seen the invoice. This, this benevolent ministry works real, real hard. And to those that work with her that are going in your pockets, I know that you're blessed. So anytime you do something for the Lord and you do it with the right heart and the right spirit, blessings are surely going, going to flow. And so we thank God for, for, for all of you and for your, and for your commitment. But, but, but throughout this pandemic, the benevolent ministry has been a constant. Amen. And we thank you, uh, Steph, for those members that work with you, under you, and you have them working, amen. Sister Lisa will work you to death. Uh, Sister Lisa Newsom, she, she does what she's been asked to do, and we thank God uh, for that. To the Western Grove family, it's been a wonderful experience today. But I want you to take the day to enjoy your family. United States said this is Mother's Day. I have Mother's Day about four times a week. <laughs> Sometimes, depending on, it be three times a week, but it's my privilege. It's some challenging times because I'm just pulled from one end to the other, but I only have one mother. And I think about that sometimes. If I lose my mother, that's it. No more grandmother. You know, I know y'all will be trying to, you know, step up. I'll be your grandmama. Uh-uh. Can't nobody be grandmama, be my mama. But with her, and she's still with me. And we thank God, God for that. But take today. Children, enjoy your parents if you still got them. If you haven't talked to them in a while. Y'all left on a bad situation, make this day a good one. Just checking on them. Don't want anything. Just want you to know you're on my mind. You're on my heart. This is Mother's Day. They're been going to be sad today because they don't have their mother here. There are some mothers that are going to be sad today because they don't have their children with them to celebrate this day. Let's be in prayer for all of that, for all of that. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on Wednesday night. I Zoom at 7 o'clock. Now that's fixing to change real soon. We're coming back to this building. So, so when y'all don't go, go on Zoom and it ain't there, we at the building. And, and, and so like virtual church, they might be a little upset for about a few uh, weeks or so. But I got to train y'all to come back to church, to the building. Amen. They're all at home this morning. Sleep right now. But we're going to wake y'all up. Amen. God's going to wake you up. He's going to wake you up. He can get you back out to the house of God. It's been a transition. See, but... Give us a good old shouting song before we go home and uh, dismiss it from this place. Shall we stand together? Hold on. I'm sorry. Go on, stand up. It's good to have Brother and Sister Miles in the church house with us today. And I'm so moving so fast that I failed to recognize those that are visiting with us. And I have a visitor from here. And there, this here it is Henry and is that Tanya? Tanya? Tanya Stevenson visiting with us uh, uh, from the New Zion uh, Church there in Senatobia and the guest of Sister Shirley Stewart. Amen. Amen. I don't have visitors on the others besides you all. Would you mind telling us who you are, where you're from? And you all are from? Oh, 
called New Zion because, you know, y'all look good right there on that pew. You, you don't have to go back to New Zion. Stay right here at the Grove. Amen. Good, good to have you. Let's celebrate that. Amen. Let's celebrate the heaven with us on today. Anybody to my right that's visiting with us that I did not mention? Anyone else in the middle? How about to my right, to my left? God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. We'd like to speak with you right after worship. I'm going to hide behind, hide behind the mountain, the mountain, Lord. I'm going to hide.